Nek Chan's rock garden in Chandigarh is a great place and tends to interest cultural critics rather more than the work of contemporary landscape architects or garden designers. They see it, rightly, as being in sharp contrast with the professional sterility of Corbusier's master planning, which they hate for its authoritarianism. The way in which Chand became a sculptor and a garden designer reminds me of a story from my first teacher in landscape architecture, H.F. Clarke. Frank was born on a rubber plantation in Malaya, and after spending his twenties doing odd jobs in many countries, he decided to base his career choice on what he had most enjoyed. After much thought, he realised this was the making of a tiny garden in the tundra in Alaska. He worked at it in the evenings, when the other men went drinking after long days counting salmon. Nek Chan's rock garden began in an equally small way which was pre-modern and post-modern. Chand was a poorly paid roads inspector who, when cycling round Chandigarh, began collecting debris from the 27 villages which were then being demolished to make way for the new city. From 1958 onwards, Chand assembled debris in a thicket in a forest conservancy where building had been prohibited since 1902. The site lay between the capital complex and Sukhna Lake. Chand collected stones, metal, broken glass and ceramics and hid them in the woods near the Public Works Department depot for which he was responsible and from which he obtained cement, metal and, and labour too. Chand had a good collection of material by 1965 and began making statues for what's described on the Nek Chand Foundation website as a miniature world depicting Indian village life, as well as a fantasy kingdom of palaces, pavilions and other structures. He saw life, gods and goddesses in the rocks. And he saw beauty and art in what people said was junk. It seems likely to me that the kingdom was inspired, perhaps unconsciously, by the always popular Hindu epics. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata both have large castes. Events often take place in the woods, and many of the stories are of humans interacting with gods and goddesses. Lord Rama is said to be the seventh avatar of Lord Vishnu. Chand had made over 2,000 statues by 1972 when his secret kingdom was found. After a struggle, the authorities approved and supported Chand's work. Ian Jackson sees it as being of fundamental importance because, in a very unselfconscious way, it began to question and overturn the very conceptual tool employed in the making of Chandigarh. In order to reform the notions of modernity on the subcontinent in a post colonial context. Wow. The first phase of the rock garden, which is the first part you come to, was a canyon made with the stones and debris Nek Chant had collected on his bicycle. It includes an evocation of the village in which Chand was born. The second phase, made between 1976 and 1983, has waterfalls, pools, dark passages, tangled concrete branches, bridges, and the facade of a Mughal palace. The third phase, built after 1983, is an open plaza. It's used for theatrical performances and has a great feature. The swings which dangle from an aqueduct-like structure. Swings were classic elements in Hindu gardens. Western health and safety regulations would not allow this kind of swing, but they are great fun, a great spectacle, and a great way of enjoying a breeze on hot sticky days. Congratulations to Nek Chan 
who died in 2015. We can learn from his work that the traditional client-designer-contractor procurement model is not always the best approach to landscape architecture or garden design. It wasn't used before the modern age and its popularity may decline when modernism has run its course. <laughs>